Just Me, a place to be me, where you get to experience life. This life is a journey, not a guided tour. If you want the rainbow, you have to go through the rain. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Happy May. We want to start off by acknowledging that this is the month that we will be acknowledging for Just Me Therapy Podcast and celebrating and embracing women. All right. It is Mother's Day um, during this month, and we are going to be um, first and foremost uplifting an organization, My Community Resource. Um, who hosts a bi-monthly ladies night out. And we have a couple of the mental health professionals who have um, participated in the panel discussion and organizing the ladies night out um, to ask them questions about women's health, about how they interact with different clients around that, um, and just kind of get an idea, get some feedback as to A, um, the event and be kind of get some insight from professionals about what they see as far as women's wellness. Um, so real fast, I want to introduce Ladies Night Out is a bi-monthly um, event hosted by My Community Resource Center. And My Community Resource Center is a nonprofit that um, offers different types of conversations and events in the community to uplift our community. And so one of the things that Ladies Night Out is offers good food and good fellowship. Um, so I have had the honor of attending one of uh, both of the events hosted so far, and um, there has been um, libations, there has been charcuterie boards, there has been um, different types of meats, there has been definitely activities, and there has been the first event hosted a panel of at least five married men. And the women um, who did attend the event got to actually ask the men different questions around what it means to be married and what it looks like from a male's perspective, as far as communication, as far as responsibility sharing, as far as, far as problem solving. And then um, the next event hosted a panel of single men. And so the women got an opportunity to ask single men um, just different questions about relationship, about communication, um, and what that looks like so that we can get some feedback from a male's perspective. So in order to kind of keep this conversation going and provide this dialogue between, healthy dialogue between relationships, between men and women, um, and really uplift our community, um, we have decided to ask some of the participants and hosts of Ladies Night Out to join our podcast and kind of share some information um, for our listeners. So without further ado, can the um, individuals on this on this podcast please introduce themselves? Um, the licensed mental health professionals, please introduce themselves. Mr. Dale? Uh, yes, um, my name is Dale Slaughter. I'm a licensed clinical mental health counselor uh, for the past, practicing for the past 18 years in various capacities, but mainly office, which is my first love. <laughs> Back in the office, um, been in, uh, let's see, uh, realms of MST, uh, uh, intensive in-home, uh, did a little bit of that, uh, as well as manage a little bit and supervising. I'm not sure if y'all knew that, but I did supervision within a group home at one point in my career um, and did some of my PRS things with the state. And I think I got a nice little belt clip of uh of experiences to where now i'm just doing what i need to do in the office for those uh within the population of uh, family and marriage and adolescents children and um adults up to at least 65 plus so other than that i'm glad to be here and i appreciate being invited back to help uh just me podcast yes thank you so much for being here Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Mr. Lorenzo. <laughs> yes, yes. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Lorenzo Hansley. I'm a licensed cl clinical social worker. Um, I have been in the mental health field since 99 in different capacities. Um, I have experience in working in residential facilities, um, also um, providing outpatient therapy, um, at a location here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Also, um, I take pride in working with charter schools, um, serving children with emotional um, concerns. Um, also work with the family unit. Um, so within that dynamic, as we know, things can get kind of complex. 
So, you know, working with the mothers, the fathers, and also the children and um, reaching a goal that will be beneficial for the whole family unit. Um, I'm also glad to be here to support as I feel like this is a podcast for the people and um, offer great insight to assist people in their life journey. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lorenzo. <laughs> Mr. David Buchanan. Good morning, everybody. I'm I'm uh so happy to finally be invited to just me podcast. Um, Come on now, Mr. David. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm I'm I finally got the invitation, so I so so I gladly accept it. Um, but uh, again, um, my name is David Buchanan. Um, I'm a therapist here at Journeys Counseling Center. Um, I work with. Um, mainly adults. I work with uh, people that are in <clears throat> people that are in relationships. Um, they're married, or they are, you know, seriously dating. Um, and you know, helping them work through different issues. I work with uh, a dual dual diagnosis population. So these are folks that may have a developmental disability, but also have a mental health disability. So, you know, these are adults that may live independently or live in an AFL home. And, you know, they have, you know, various issues such as depression or anxiety, uh, um, along with a developmental diagnosis. Um, so, you know, it may be IDD, it may be autism, um, and also have that mental health um, issue going on as well. Um, I am a trained TFCBT therapist, uh, trauma-focused, cognitive behavioral health therapist, and I'm also a hypnotherapist where I use hypnosis to help people work through different issues and different behaviors that they may be experiencing and, um, you know, helping them to get to a point where they can work through past trauma and past issues that they uh, may have experienced that may be causing some issues that they're currently having. Um, so, you know, I thoroughly enjoy what I do. Um, you know, I think everybody on this panel um, is passionate about this field and what they do, because if not, then, you know, there's a lot of other things that we could be doing, but, we, but we're really passionate about helping people, passionate about the community, um, and, you know, passionate about growing as human beings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for all of those introductions. And so without further ado, to dive right in, um, there's going to be a couple of questions that we ask our panelists, but more importantly, they're going to ask if you're going to answer these questions from perspectives of professionals, but then also perspectives of being human beings as well, because for far too long, we have separated the professional and the human being. Um, but we are all all humans. So we are all going to experience some of the answers that we share today um, with open minds and open hearts. So again, women, we're uplifting women this month. So first off, I want to start by kind of talking about the importance of women's mental health um, and what you guys as professionals have observed over your working experience. So what are some of the roles and responsibilities that you have witnessed women hold? Um, within their daily lives? And this can be for anyone to answer. Jump right in. Well, um, I, I'll start ahead, off. Um, um, well, as, as you know, um, in our modern society, um, women can hold or wear many different hats um, in regards to being the caregivers, the mother, um, also being, um, you know, friends or girlfriends, you know, providing that sound advice for people they love. Um, and then from an employment standpoint, you know, they have to wear many hats in regards to being a traditional employee or entrepreneur. Um, and then, you know, the dynamic of whatever relationship or lack of relationship they may be in, uh, they may be uh, the mother and the father in the home. So it, it just gets kind of complex um, depending on that particular lady situation. Your professional opinion, what changes have you seen in women's mental health? 
pre-pandemic versus post-pandemic. Once again, in your professional opinion, what changes have you seen in women's mental health? Pre-pandemic versus post-pandemic. Mr. Dale, Mr. Davey, y'all want to jump in or you want me to respond to that? Well, um, are we allowed to go back to the to the previous question first? Okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So traditionally, you know, women are, you know, women in the past were, you know, had, you know, typical traditional roles. You know, if if you know, you look back at, you know, old TV shows from the 50s or 60s or 70s, um, you know, some of those traditional roles are you know, what women in the past um, sort of participated in. But now I think we're at a point where we're well beyond some of those traditional societal roles. And through through my experience, what I've seen is, you know, women today um, are doing everything. I mean, they are doing everything from, you know, taking care of, you know, the house just in a traditional um, perspective, raising kids, um, taking care of their, you know, um, their parents. Um, you know, those those roles are just so, um, you know, it's just so many roles now. And, um, and, you know, I think that sometimes that can really be overwhelming. And, you know, I think as a, as a clinician, you know, I think that we see, a lot of the stress that women are going through because they're holding all of these roles. Um, as, as Mr. Lorenzo said, um, you know, even, even within the relationship sometimes, um, you know, there aren't, there aren't traditional roles even within a relationship. So, you know, so women are just doing so many different things and, um, and that can be a stressor at times. Um, and so, you know, that's where, you know, we kind of step in to help assist to, you know, to identify roles, identify boundaries um, and, you know, try to help uh, women find different ways to manage the stressors that they, um, you know, go through on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mr. David, because, of course, being a woman and having a lot of roles and responsibilities, you know, you grow up thinking that you can um, or you are groomed to do this and to do that and to take on all the responsibilities. If you're a mother, as a mother, you are taught you're supposed to cook, you're supposed to clean, you're supposed to do the dishes, you're supposed to do this and that. But then as you try to live it, you want to go to school, you want to do that, you have all those things. So that stress factor goes from zero to 1,000 like that. So I'm glad to, um, to hear um, that you're able to see that when women do come before you and I do want to also acknowledge the fact that um, but Mr. Dale, Mr. David, and Ms. Lorenzo represent the 4% of Black uh, African-American male clinicians. And that number is small compared to what's out there. So to have them on our panel and knowing their responsibilities is, um, is, a, a, is a win. So thank you, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I was just... Uh, wow. Right. I didn't even know that. Thank you for that. Four percent. That's pretty darn low. Four um, percent. Oh my gosh. Um, well, um, to answer the questions, and I want to answer the first, but lead it to the second. Um, I go back to just my own, somewhat my own upbringing prior to me becoming a clinician, and I see my mother play all types of roles. Um, she was the headship. She was the entrepreneur. She was the one working out there. She did all those things. So the traditional role of mother was not necessarily seen in my home growing up, but I seen that outside of my home. So I have witnessed a woman or women wear multiple hats from my inception and my startup and upbringing um, as a single mom raising for three boys and a girl. So at the end of the day, I know women are very strong, are very powerful in what they do and bring to the table. And so for me looking at now, uh, the roles of women being in so many multitudes of uh, different roles that they play, it's almost like it. what I've seen in my household has spread across the United States, across wherever, um, because there are more single moms out here. As a clinician and professional, 
I see more of that now than I've ever seen it in history. And so women are somewhat even forced to take on both and father, mother, working, entrepreneur, taking care of kids, taking care of bills. And yes, like Mr. David and Ms. Lorenzo have said already, the stress is can be overwhelming. And so trying to balance that is 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 doable. But again, it can be stressful and can break down if supports are not put in place. But I also see also women being able to band together with other women and actually help out. Aunties help, you know, mom. She helped me. I help you. You got kids this day. You got kids this day. Whatever the case may be. So I've also seen that as far as uh, the roles in general. But I'll lead into the second question and go ahead and start into that. Um, Pre-pandemic, I guess before pandemic, that was still going on. And I think you've seen a lot of the caregiving going on, family ties, really trying to break there. But then uh, within um, within the pandemic, uh, it was kind of all that broke down, as we know. But after the pandemic, it's like we're struggling and women are struggling to get back out there, get back out there to build the build, build the bonds that they've had through communities and and trusting who who to trust, who to who to talk to or who's more willing to want to actually talk with me now. You know, is it my family? Is it my friend? And can we make those ties again? Um, so I would I would say the struggles are still real and the roles are still happening. But I think more of it is more of a struggle because holistically, we don't know how to actually get out of this whole post pandemic deal has kind of shocked us to the system. Now we're trying to get back on our feet now. So I'll I'll end there and let you guys kind of answer that. But that's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Mr. David? Yeah. So um, one of the things that that I've seen um, and I'll, I think it's post pandemic related. Um, but one of the things that I've seen is um, a lot of women are maneuvering in in a super strong capacity um, and, you know, Kind of what I mean by that. So an example of it, because I was trying to think of of an example, um, because I'm a, you know, I'm an example person that helps me kind of put everything together. But but imagine going to the gym and seeing, you know, somebody that's in pretty good shape, you know, like that's, you know, a lot of times maybe what you expect to see when you see somebody in the gym. Um, and then you see a bodybuilder. So that bodybuilder is sort of abnormal. And that's kind of what I've seen with women post pandemic. Uh, not all women, obviously, but but some women are maneuvering in a super strong capacity. Um, you know, they are, you know, as I said earlier, like they're having to do all of these things. And so it's a little abnormal to see just like seeing that bodybuilder in the gym. Um, and you know, again, there are, you know, you know, we could have a whole nother podcast about the reasons that she may be maneuvering in this super strong capacity um, because all of it is not pandemic related. Um, you know, there are some societal things and relationships and different things like that that causes her to, you know, act in that manner. But, um, you know, this is what, you know, this is what I've seen. And, um, you know, I think that, seeing and seeing how women are able to uh, adjust and, you know, become abnormally strong um, during, during, during this time, you know, has been a little different experience than it was prior to um, COVID and, and the pandemic. Um, and again, I think that a lot of that is just because of the roles and just how things are now, um, you know, people are not, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. And, you know, women are super strong and super responsible and going the extra limit to make sure that everything works. Um, and so that's, you know, one of the things that I've seen personally, just in terms of um, how things are a little different from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic. That, that was good, Mr. David. I'm, I like the example because like me, I'm a visual learner. So that that was really, really good. 
So, so with that, I asked the question, what would be some healthy or unhealthy ways that you've seen women in the past cope with dealing with that? Because like to see going to the gym, I'm, I do everything, but look big on the outside, but weak on the inside. So, um, so when you gave that example, that's what made me think of how do you cope some healthy ways people cope with it and unhealthy ways. Um, Mr. David, if you let me chime in, um, and I'm going to, you know, share some input in regards to Miss Tracy's question. But I also want to piggyback in regards to, um, you know, what you and Mr. Dale said in regards to women being, uh, you know, multi-talented and, and super strong in many different areas um, <clears throat> that we have seen post-pandemic. Um, I think we also must be, well, in my personal opinion, that we also need to be clear that, you know, that is a strength and a weakness in regards to being strong. Uh, you have to do that for your kids or your, you know, your household, whatever your household looks like. Um, so that's, that's great that you're able to do that and basically um, able to keep um, things going and able to maintain, uh, which is a challenge in itself, but also doing that. Um, I'm concerned that some women are losing their femininity in regards to being so strong. Um, so, um, like I said, it's a gift and a curse. You have to do it to maintain and make ends meet. But I think women also should be aware that what they're doing may not be able to be sustained for a long period of time. Um, because we all we are all human, and I know that we're talking about females at the moment. Um, so we all have limitations, and we may be able to be strong for a period of time or extremely strong for a period of time, but eventually we're going to, we're going to burn out just like the next person. So um, I do understand that desperate situations calls for desperate measures, but I think we have to, you know, um, provide self-assessment to identify how long can we, we withstand this super strong role that we're currently operating in. Because if we don't do that, um, or if women don't do that, I'm concerned that it could be a crash um, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and, you know, any other capacity. Um, so I wanted to, you know, identify that or or make that um, observation because I think it's, it, it, it's fair and it's honest assessment so that we don't set our women up to feel like they can maintain this super strength for the next five to 10 years straight. Um, because I feel like it will be um, detriment um, in regards to their health. Um, so wanted to say, share that. And then in, in regards to Ms. Tracy's question, um, in regards to ways to cope or healthy coping skills that uh, we have seen women identify or we have encouraged women to utilize is definitely having that support system, um, being able to um, have, you know, three to five people um, that you really can trust um, and have conversations where you can be completely honest with your feelings and kind of things that you're going through um, to avoid internal internalization. Uh, we really have to have that that source that we can, you know, speak to about different things. And uh, one person may be that source for one part of your life and another person could be another source for another part of your life. Uh, you may not get, you know, your support system all in one person. You may feel comfortable talking to, you know, Susan about this and um, Brenda about something else. So, but identifying that support group, I think is very, very important um, so that women can have an outlet um, considering all of the, the hats that they're wearing and all of the experiences that they may encounter. Y'all are bringing me to like, emotional tears and um, <laughs> um, tears of joy, just tears. Thank you for this tissue. <laughs> tears of joy and support, because to be honest with you, as a woman, um, and just kind of sharing, hearing some of the responses that you guys have offered, um, I almost feel like you see us, like you see, <laughs> is that absolutely, um, at the end of the day, there are and it's good to be seen. It is good to be seen. It is good to be seen. Um, how, yes, there are several hats that women wear. Um, and I think that the pandemic has created or did create that fight or flight mode for a lot of individuals. And 
with that being said, um, it forced us to either jump into the pool and start swimming, even if we didn't know how to swim, use our life vest, do all of that good stuff because we had to survive. We had to survive for our kids. We had to survive for our families. We had to survive for our parents. We had to survive for our siblings. So now as we are beginning to tread water and we've learned how to swim, now we're needing to have some of those other compartments around us that um, continue that support. Um, and that's what I'm kind of hearing you guys say is that a lot of anxiety was created. A lot of maybe sadness was created over the pandemic. But and so we really had to tap into that survival mode that not only women, men have to do as well. But for all intents and purposes, this month, we're talking about women. Um, and so some of that meant that we had to take energy from certain parts of our roles and transform them and move them over to our survival mode because we had to survive right then and there. We had to survive with our kids being at home um, all day with school and um, at home learning. And now that society is kind of you know, surfacing out, we have to go back to that. All right, let's tend to the family structure. Let's make sure that we're supporting the relationships that we've worked so hard to keep afloat. Um, and so what that looks like is kind of maybe stepping out of some of those unhealthy things that we have stepped, we stepped into during the pandemic. Um, I know that from some clients and certain family members in my life, there's been an excessive use of substance use. There's been avoidance. There's been irritability. There's been breaking healthy habits. You know, there were people who used to go and work out at least three times a week. And now it's like, I don't even feel like going to the gym. So uh, social avoidance. So next episode, we're going to talk about what that trauma really looks like and breaks down into and how we as women, and we're going to hear it from a male's perspective, how we as women can really kind of work through some of those things and continue to stay uplifted and supported um, within our family structure and within our community. So until next time, guys, take care of yourself so we can take care of each other. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Just Me Therapy podcast. If you are seeking further one-on-one -on -one diagnoses, interventions, and treatment plans, please consider scheduling an appointment with an individual counselor at Journeys Counseling Center, located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Journeys can be reached at 336-294-1349. The mission of Just Me Therapy podcast is to use authentic conversations to uplift one's mind, body, and soul. The goal of Just Me Therapy is to offer affordable education and insight to individuals who experience financial barriers to accessing individualized behavioral health care services. With that being said, the information, including opinions, advice, and recommendations discussed in this podcast are intended for individual, informational, and educational purposes only. Such information is not intended to substitute the recommendations of your own licensed therapist or healthcare professional. Although we are licensed behavioral health professionals, we are not your licensed behavioral health professional. As a result, the advice mentioned on this podcast should not replace the recommendations offered by your own qualified health professional.